Whether you voted leave or remain on the issue of Brexit, one thing we can all agree is Brexit has been nothing short of a mess of ill-made decisions. Today, we learn from it to understand how you can make key decisions in your life. Brexit is one of the most topical issues in politics right now, with a level of uncertainty and lack of clarity that goes beyond anything I can remember in my lifetime. However, the key in all of what's happening comes down to decision making. Something we all have to do in our lives and something we can grow to learn from during this experience since the Brexit referendum was announced. In today's video, I'll be focusing on how fear influences our decision making process and how this has affected the Brexit voting process with another part due to come out about how to consider the final decision before you make it. For those who don't know, the Brexit referendum was a vote held in the UK on whether or not to remain in the European Union, or the EU. The public voted to leave with a 52% vote to leave, winning over the 48% who chose to remain, which began a process for the UK to begin negotiations with the members of the EU to try and work out the details of the leaving process. The key focus here isn't about Brexit and the possible outcomes of all that is happening, but rather the understanding of the process of how to make decisions in order to avoid the chaos that Brexit has resulted in and instead ensure you set yourself up to make the most effective decisions in your life. I will also be giving my personal opinion on Brexit later on in the video, so stick around to the end to hear it. If you find today's video informative, please consider liking the video to let me know that you've enjoyed it, share this video with your friends and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the bell icon as if you don't, YouTube won't necessarily inform you of the latest videos. Now, if you have a key decision to make in life, what should you be doing to set yourself up to make the right choice? Well, the first step is to understand the source of your fear. Often if you have a key decision to make, it's usually difficult to make a choice on what to do because there's an underlying fear behind the decision. Let's take Brexit as an example. If you look at some of the core reasoning behind Brexit, it came down to a fear of how easy it was for immigrants to enter the UK via EU nations. This resulted in a huge number of people voting for Brexit to try and curb what they felt was a problem with immigration itself. So, rather than let your fears take control of your emotional state when making an important decision, you should instead number 1. Write about your fears. Journaling about your fears may help you start to understand them and make better decisions as a result. Write down a decision you need to make and then go through a process to describe or list everything that you're worried about regarding this decision. This can serve to vent about those fears without judging yourself or feeling judged by others for having them. Number 2. Identify the worst case scenario. Once you have written about the decision you need to make and why you have fear regarding the decision, take it a step further. Identify the worst case scenario for each possible decision. By pushing your decision to the limits of what could go wrong, you can often make the process significantly less daunting, as we tend to let our feelings escalate about the possible outcomes rather than focusing on the truth. For example, with Brexit and the situation with immigration, you have to consider that if the UK was to leave, then the worst case scenario is losing potentially skilled workers coming in from abroad to help an aging population. Likewise, if the UK was to remain, immigration would remain high and competition for jobs would be higher and traditional culture might be argued as getting diluted. Now to focus on the latter. Immigration has been fundamental in the recovery and boost of the UK economy in the past and is one of the reasons the UK has maintained its status as a global economic power, especially after World War II. Likewise, the UK has been widely accepted as a multicultural and diverse country for decades now, meaning that the fear behind emigration might have some valid points, but the worst case scenario is the country continues as it is, which for most people hasn't been that bad. Even where there have been issues within the nation, if you delve deeper, it's not often an issue of immigration that's the root of the problem. Number 3. Consider whether the decision you will make will be permanent. Once you have thought about everything that could go wrong, think about whether the decision is reversible. Most decisions, perhaps not so much in the case of Brexit, are reversible and you can take comfort in knowing that if you have found a decision you have made is the wrong one, you can always make change to fix the situation later on. 
The one word of caution in this particular point is to learn to master the art of diplomacy. If you choose to quit a job, try to leave on positive terms as if you change your mind and would like to return in the future, then you've left yourself an opportunity to do so. I've seen this in my career too. People leave only to return in a different role because they've maintained a relationship with the company and have a valued skill set that the company would like to hire back. Number four, talk to a friend, family member or a professional. Don't feel like you have to make the tough decision all by yourself, but instead enlist the help of a trusted friend or family member to help you or at least listen to your concerns. Share the details about the decision as well as your fears about what could go wrong. It may make you feel a bit better to just vocalize your fears about the decision and what you'll often find is that by getting a different perspective, you can rethink your perception about the decision. In that respect, also consider talking to someone who is removed from the situation and who will have a neutral opinion. This could have been something that was highly valuable to do in the process of Brexit and something I feel often got lost during the campaigning process. People are often quicker to argue and dismiss differing opinions or the opinions of others when they are driven by a fear and thus losing out on a number of critical facts as they may not have considered themselves on making a decision. In Brexit, it's pretty clear that many people have regretted their choices on voting and many of those that do have said that they have felt misinformed or lacking in the detail. While this can be understandable, it's also the responsibility of the individual to educate themselves as best they can before they make their decision. This means not just forming opinions internally, but then gathering knowledge and understanding from external sources to be better placed in their final choice. After all, the process will only serve to either reaffirm their choice as correct, or they'll gain a new perspective which makes them rethink their choice both of which would be of greater benefit when they finally make their decision. Now, when it comes to the role of fear and making decisions, people such as Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson used fear during the Brexit campaign to effectively garner votes to leave as they targeted the fears people had with the high levels of immigration to try and influence their decision. While immigration is only one facet of the Brexit vote, it became the central point for many who took part in the vote for these reasons. Now, I mentioned earlier I would give my view on Brexit. I voted to remain based on my position, knowledge and understanding of both sides. However, more importantly, I don't think a sensitive issue such as Brexit should have come down to a referendum as the public wasn't well informed and was even misled in making a sound decision. It's not a decision to take lightly and to be frank, the average person isn't in a position to make a well informed and educated decision in the end. Given how close the results were, with 52% voting to leave and 48% voting to remain, I also feel that the decision was far from unanimous and only highlighted how split the nation was on the matter, as opposed to it being the people's decision to leave as has been pushed forward by politicians, particularly Theresa May, since the results have come out. Ultimately, I feel the decision-making process since Brexit first began has been ill thought out. Not just the voting process and the campaigns, which played on the emotions of the public rather than providing clear and easily understood pros and cons of both sides, but also the decisions before the campaigns began and the decisions following on from the vote. So use this experience to learn how to make decisions in your own life and ensure you take the correct line of course when you're forced to make key decisions in your life. To put your decision making skills into practice, check out my previous video on setting up positive daily routines to help you get the most out of your day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.